So in this uh, passage from the Epistle of the Hebrews, it's one of my uh, very favorite uh, verses in the New Testament. It says, um, it says, for this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He's not ashamed to be our sibling. And what a powerful, powerful promise of God that Jesus, who knows us from the inside out, is not ashamed to share our life, not ashamed to be present with us in the midst of our struggles, in the midst, midst of our testing, in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our brokenness and vulnerability. He's not embarrassed by us. He's not ashamed of us. He doesn't recoil from us. He doesn't, Jesus does not think we do him discredit or dishonor, but rather pours himself out all the more on all of those places of brokenness and vulnerability in us. All the things about us which are frankly embarrassing to ourselves, of which we ourselves are ashamed, Jesus stretches out his healing hand and loves even there all the more. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, that the that which is held in the least honor is dressed with the greatest honor. And that which is, you know, it's like your head is the most important part of your body and you don't, you know, you don't even put anything on it. And in a, in a similar way, in a sense, Jesus takes that which is most shameful in us and pours out his mercy and forgiveness there. Because he is not ashamed of us and will do whatever is required, whatever is required to make us worthy to be his brothers and sisters. He stands with us. And that is a great and glorious thing. And one of the great things in which gives us the courage, it gives us the courage to confess our sins and to repent to Jesus because we know that he is with us and that he loves us and nothing can ever shake that. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews. The one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who, who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 